Should you use a corn insecticide this year? Well, maybe, maybe not. We're going to talk through some of the things you might want to take a look at on your farm, including whether or not you should use liquid or dry, and if you have to do this with the planter, or if there's some other way you can apply insecticide. I'd love to go back in time on Ag PhD and see when we started talking about, hey, there's this rootworm BT in development. We're so excited. We can't wait till this comes out because we may not have to use insecticide with the planter anymore. Well, that was kind of true for a little while. Unfortunately, now there's a lot of resistance to single and even starting to be some resistance to stacked rootworm BT traits. So if you say, well, I'm just going to plant this stacked rootworm BT trait and I'm just going to be 100% fine for control on rootworm, I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket anymore and start thinking about, you know, I probably better have some insecticide out there too to kill some of those rootworms before they have to take a bite out of my plants. I'm super happy that the BTs have worked like they have, but to Darren's point, the resistance keeps building with one, so then they develop another. So the resistance builds there. They, they develop some other, and it's, it's just a protein, just different proteins. But, you know, it's nice that we don't have to spray insecticide or don't have to apply insecticide a lot of times but here's the trouble. Number one, there is resistance. And number two, there are a lot of pests that we can't control with these BTs. So insecticides in a lot of cases are really nice. Well, let's talk about some of those other bugs too. I'm really concerned about cutworm protection because you know we've been relying on the BT products to help us with the cutworm. We can certainly get some assistance out of different insecticides that we could be applying. We've also got seed corn beetles and seed corn maggots and wireworms that have been really at high populations. And what are we relying on to control them? The neonics and the seed treatment mainly because we aren't getting a whole lot of control out of anything else that we're doing later. So unless you've got some insecticide you're putting in the soil at planting time, you're going to have problems with those. And of course, we've got some resistance to the above ground BTs developing as well with different bugs, including corn borers. So right. we've got a lot of things to protect against. Yeah, the big one I think about is white grubs. There is no BT that's even going to come close to touching a white grub. And white grub issues are growing across the United States because, as a general statement, we're doing less tillage. Less tillage means we have more bugs issues. So for all these reasons, we would just encourage you to take a look at using some insecticide on your farm. Now, rootworm is by far and away the number one pest, but you have to look at all these other things too, and it just depends on your area. So look at your area, look at what you're susceptible to, and then try to make that determination. But all I can tell you is this, insecticides really don't cost that much money, and especially as you start going for really big time yield, you have to have a great stand. You have to have a great root system. You have to have good stalks and good leaves to get that kind of yield. Most planters today though, Brian, are not coming with insecticide as a standard feature with insecticide application equipment. So we're adding things on aftermarket. Probably the easiest thing to add on is a liquid tank and a liquid system. Many farmers are doing that to put on in furrow fertilizer already anyway. So you could do that for a product like Capture LFR, for example, or uh, a number of different variations of that product that FMC has developed. You've got technology there that mixes with fertilizer pretty well and can be delivered right in the row and is safe to the seed. Here's one other thing I'm going to throw out too. Should we use insecticide maybe in soybeans? Should we be using Capture LFR not just in corn, but should we use it in soybeans? So I realize our topic is corn and we're looking at insect issues in corn here, but I want you to think about everything you possibly could use these insecticides for. Because to Darren's point, a lot of these things have come down in price. When you can use liquid insecticide, especially like Capture LFR, it does not cost much money per acre. All right, it does cost a little more for the dry products. We do really like the control we get with Force and Aztec. Those are available in a variety of different ways, including in the smart box systems. That's probably the more popular way that farmers are adding on to the planter. Uh, there's the new Thrive 3D system that we're going to be using on our planter, too, uh, that turns Capture LFR into a foam that has 50 times more coverage in the furrow. I'm really excited about that and the difference that can make. And Force Evo, there's a totally different system to apply that product. So you can get Force in a completely different way. Many of these are set up so you only have to fill one time a day, if that, you can cover a lot of acres on a single fill, which is a really nice feature too. So our point here is if you don't have insecticide on that planter, that should not prevent you from using something out there for an insecticide because a lot of these systems, the companies will pay for them or pay for a portion of them to get that on your planter. And like in the case of Capture LFR, you can throw it right into your fertilizer tank with the liquid fertilizer you're using. And by the way, in furrow would be a better placement for insecticide than two by two. 
Well, there should be a lot of consideration going into 2020 about which insecticide you'll be using in your cornfields. Unfortunately, they do kill bugs, but they don't stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will coming up next.